Sitting is the new smoking. That's why fitness matters when it comes to living a healthy, productive, and long life. And it might be easier than you think. Hi everyone, Floyd Meyer here with Catalyst Impacts. And today we're gonna to be talking about how fitness plays into your longevity. Now, being unfit can be thought of as your heart and lungs being unable to deal with either moderate intensity or high intensity stressors. So this could be exercise like you would think of as going to the gym, or it could just be a regular stressor like going for a walk or just having to pick up something heavy. When people are unfit, then their hearts and their lungs are unable to keep up with this exercise capacity. And that's why you see when people are you know, even shopping and they have to go take breaks and they have to go sit down, it's because they are not fit enough to deal with that stress that they are currently dealing with. And they have done numerous studies and one of them looked at about 150,000 people. And what they saw was when they put these people through a stress test, which is where you have to walk on a treadmill at an increasing intensity, so it gets harder and harder and harder. And they can look at your heart and see how strong it is and how able it is to deal with that stress that you're dealing with. So what they saw when they were putting people through these stress tests is that if you had a poor level of fitness, that it was a more accurate predictor of your mortality, meaning it was more closely associated with your risk of dying than having diabetes, having high blood pressure, or if you were a smoker, like if you smoked cigarettes. So sitting can be, and being sedentary, being unfit, can be even more dangerous than if you have these chronic diseases or if you're doing something that everyone knows is bad, like smoking cigarettes. So the good news is that when they looked at the other side of the coin, so these people that were actually extremely fit for their age, people that were, their hearts and their lungs, they were strong, was that this was a negative risk factor, meaning that it actually protected you from dying from an, all kinds of a number of different diseases. So your mortality risk goes down and the more fit you were, the the stronger that effect was. So there isn't like a cutoff where if you get to a certain level of fitness that you become the same as people that are ahead of you. The more fit you are, the stronger your heart and lungs are, the lower your mortality risk was. So that's really cool, especially for those of us that are you know, trying to look at peak performance and be the best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. The stronger you are and the stronger your heart and lungs are, the lower your mortality risk is gonna be. So this is really, really cool. Now, currently, the exercise recommendations, if you look at the uh, public health initiatives that are put forward by the United States, currently, for people that are under the age of 65, so anyone who is an adult, the recommendations are that you get 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise. So this could be thought of as like jogging, or if you see people you know, on elliptical machines or bikes or something like that, that would be a moderate level of intensity. So you're not just sitting there walking, you're pushing it, but when you go at that kind of an intensity, you have to have about 150 minutes, and that's not including, you know, warming up, getting to the gym, all that stuff. This is actual physical activity that you are, are at that moderate intensity. Now, if you push it up a little bit and you do vigorous intensity, then you only need to have 75 minutes to still get these protective effects. And these again are just gonna be the recommendations. So it's gonna vary depending on exactly what it is you're doing and your own individual biochemistry, but you can kind of get an idea of how much this is gonna take. So for vigorous activity, it's gonna take about 75 minutes per week of you going in. And this is gonna be, you know, actually running, doing sprints, things like weightlifting, but again, it doesn't count when you're just standing there in between sets. This is actually you doing the reps, putting in the work, being at that high intensity. So what happens for those of us who you know, are really busy and you know, maybe you don't have 150 minutes a week to go to the gym, by the time you get to the gym, get changed, and then go on the treadmill or the elliptical machine, maybe you don't have that 150 minutes each week. You know, The more things that we're trying to do 
to make the world better around us, the less time we end up having for ourselves. So this is where you really want to start working smarter instead of just working harder. And this is where high intensity interval training can come into play. So HIIT training can be an extremely, extremely effective practice that you can still maintain your cardiorespiratory fitness, meaning your heart and lungs can still remain strong, but you don't have to do the 150 minutes a week. So what's really awesome about HIIT is that you can get the same kind of effects in 30 minutes or less per week. So, I mean, most people spend longer than that when they're just driving to the gym and back. So that's why this can be such a powerful, powerful tool. And it's so powerful because of the way that it's set up. So when you do HIIT training, you have these alternating intervals of high intensity and then low intensity. And what happens is, so if you could imagine that, imagine like I'm going to go outside and I'm going to go for a, I'm just going to sprint. You know, how far could I make it? If I was going as fast as I could, I'm probably only going to make it for, you know, a minute, maybe even less than a minute going as hard as I possibly can. And then I'm going to be, you know, completely exhausted. But if you can scale it back a little bit and say, I only go for 30 seconds and then I take a break and I rest for about a minute or two minutes and then I do another 30 seconds and then I rest for another minute to two minutes and then I do another 30 seconds and you, you can repeat that. I could go at that high intensity so I'm not fatiguing myself to the point where I'm unable to do the next round. So it's all about finding those different times. But when you can combine that all together, say I did 10 rounds of that. Now I have sprinted at 30 seconds a piece for 10 rounds. Now I have sprinted for a total of five minutes. And I never could sprint full out for five minutes straight. So that's why you can get such a powerful effect when you're using this strategy because it actually allows you to be at that higher intensity which you're going to get an even stronger stimulus on your heart and your lungs. You're going to be promoting a bunch of health promoting pathways. You're going to be building new muscle. You're going to be burning fat, increasing your mitochondria, which is going to give you more energy and all of the other amazing things that HIIT training and just exercise in general can give you. But what's great is that you can get it in even less time. So what does this look like in actual practice? So I'm going to give you an example. So first you're going to get there and you can do this at a gym. You can do this at home. It doesn't matter. So first you really need to warm up. That is step one. And I do not want you guys to forget this because you're going to be pushing yourself to, you know, 85% to a hundred percent of your maximum capacity, depending on your own individual fitness level. And obviously if you have any injuries or anything like that, we're, you're going to have to work around that, but you're going to be pushing yourself to a high intensity. So you really need to warm your body up. And so you need to bring your body through full range of motion. You need to be breaking a sweat. You need to get your body moving so that you don't injure yourself. It, it's no, it does no good if you end up injuring yourself. The exercise does nothing because then you're going to be laid up on the couch for weeks and you're going to lose all of the beneficial effects that you would have gotten if you could have just warmed up beforehand. So first, make sure that you warm up. Second, you're going to be breaking up your training into these two different intervals. And the time that you spend in each interval is going to vary depending on your own individual fitness level. So if you're really, really fit, then you're going to be going at a longer time in the high intensity and a shorter time in the low intensity. And if you're not very fit and you know, you're new to exercise or you're getting back into it, then you're going to have a shorter high intensity phase and a longer low intensity phase so that you can recover and be better able to actually do that high intensity phase, you know, that we that you need to do to get the beneficial effects. So once you figure out the times and they're going to vary, think between about 20 seconds to a minute for the high intensity, and then somewhere between 30 seconds to maybe even up to five minutes for the low intensity, you know, for people that are completely sedentary and they are just getting back into this, or some people have chronic diseases like COPD, or if you have heart failure or something like that, it may take you a very long time to recover. So it may take up to five minutes to do that, but that's okay. Figure out whatever you're, you're comfortable with, whatever you are able to do. 
and you don't want it to be so long that you're just completely rested. Like you want this to be difficult, but you also, the key is that you want that low intensity phase long enough so that you're really able to push yourself in the high intensity phase for the whole period of time. So if you're doing a 30 second high intensity interval, you want to have your low intensity phase long enough that you are recovered enough that you can really push it for that whole 30 seconds in the high intensity phase. So then you're going to repeat those intervals, high intensity, low intensity, high intensity, low intensity for at least 10 rounds. And it's gonna, the time that you're in this is gonna vary depending on your own individual time intervals, but you really wanna make sure that you're getting at least 10 rounds. You know, that's what the studies have shown to be effective is getting the, at least those 10 rounds in. Then after you're done, you just wanna make sure that you cool your body down. Don't finish a HIIT workout, go jump in the car and drive for an hour home. That's again, your muscles are gonna lock up and that's not gonna help you in the long run. So you wanna make sure to cool your body down, do some very light stretching, walk around. You can do some of the exercises that you were doing at the higher intensity, just do them much slower. You know, get your body cooled down so that you're able to rest, your muscles can recover, and then you won't end up having muscle cramps and things like that. And really, that's it. So this can be a very, very effective way for you guys to exercise. And I want you to think of it not as a specific exercise plan. It's a way of exercising. So you can do this doing weightlifting. You can do it doing body weight exercises. If you like to swim, you can do this for swimming, for biking, running. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you like to do, you can apply this concept and go at high intensity phases and low intensity phases and just alternate between them. And so that's why it can be super, super effective because you can add this even if you're just going for a walk and that is your exercise capacity. That's the most you can push yourself. You can walk faster for a period of time and then walk slower and then walk faster and then walk slower. So you can even apply this to things like that. And so the best form of exercise is the one that you are actually going to do. So find the type of exercise that you like to do. If you like to bike, do that. And you can add this high intensity interval training in that, especially when you, you know, things happen. People have kids, people start new jobs, and you end up running out of time. So you might not have the 150 minutes that you usually have where you're going to the gym and walking on the treadmill. So you can just add this in so that you can keep your heart and lungs strong because again, being fit, your fitness level is more important to your long-term mortality, to how long you live, than even if you have diabetes or high blood pressure or if you're smoking cigarettes. So this is super, super important for you guys. And again, if you have any questions, I wanna make sure that you guys leave them in the comments below. And I've also done previous videos on high intensity interval training. So if you go back, I did a master class that you guys can watch where I break everything down and I actually give some specific examples. And I've also recorded myself doing one of these high intensity interval training workouts and I do it with weights. I do a full body weight circuit and I add some dumbbells in there. So you guys can watch that as well. And I hope this has been helpful, so make sure you guys get out there and start exercising. So again, this is Floyd Meyer with Catalyst Impacts, signing off.